Happy holidays, guys. So I just got done with episode 11 of Akame Got Kill, and here's what happened. We start from the aftermath of a homecoming party for Tatsumi, and everyone's passed out. Except for Boobs, who gets up early and heads outside to splash some water on her face. While looking down at the water, she sees a reflection, not her own, and freaks out. The reflection suddenly jumps out of the water and chucks a knife at her face, and she goes down. Afterwards, we pan out to see a girl who I'm just gonna go ahead and call Dumbolina, because she's got big ears, and, well... That's pretty much all there is to her, so Dumbelina. She's staying next to Mr. Stylish with a bunch of S&M clones that I guess are homunculuses he created or something of that effect. Anyways, we head back inside and Lubick or Lubick or whatever is there and he's walking around and suddenly from the sky comes one of the S&M clones through the ceiling. Lubick freaks the hell out realizing they're under attack and attacks the S&M clone. He wraps it up in strings and snaps its neck thinking he won, but the S&M clone isn't going to die so easily and snaps his neck back. At this point, Lubick begins freaking out because he's like, how the hell am I supposed to kill this thing? Well, there's one answer. Her name's Akami. She comes in, slices, dices, and purees the son of a bitch, and he goes down. When suddenly a couple dozen more show up. She goes to handle them, and Lubbock tries to help, but then suddenly two more big clone ones burst their way out of the ceiling, and Lubbock has to deal with them instead. Shoot outside, and we see Tatsumi and his Imperial Arms getting ready to fight. When suddenly he comes face to face with another guy who has an Imperial Arms, and it shields. The big scissors? Yeah. So Tatsumi and him start fighting, and Tatsumi realizes that he can't really damage this guy because he's impervious to Tatsumi's. Anyways, the guy ends up cutting Tatsumi because, again, those scissors can cut through anything, and Tatsumi freaks the hell out, realizing where those scissors came from, and wants him dead. But Tatsumi's not gonna have the chance because mine shows up, and she's even more pissed. See, if you remember her and Shield were kinda like best friends, so she sees the scissors, freaks the hell out, whips out her gun, and blows a hole in his soul. Anyways, after Tatsumi and mine handle the guy that had Shield's weapon, another guy attacks from behind. And this guy is the same one from the pool of water that jumped out and got boobs. So as he's approaching from behind, mine pulls out a Dragon Ball Scouter and looks up to the man ray to see exactly who's on it. And yes, I said Dragon Ball Scouter, and no, I'm not lying. Anyways, he starts talking towards them with blades, when dun da 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 Boob shows up and whips his ass. It turns out we threw the blade at her, didn't hit her in the neck, but she caught it in her teeth. So he goes to kick her with another blade, and she catches it with her teeth again, because her cat powers give her super senses. So like I said, she catches the blade and power bombs him to death. Which was kind of awesome, and I'm pretty sure that was a gunshot. Now it's at this point that all the Dominatrix people kind of start overrunning them, and it kind of looks like there's going to be a big losing battle up ahead. When da 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 dun the Bionic Commando comes flying out nowhere on a Sky Manta Ray, just go with it, and she comes bearing gifts in the form of two new recruits. Shoot back to the interior scene and we see Akami and Luba handling their business, when all of a sudden another guy comes up with blades on his arms and on his feet, kind of like roller skates. He goes toe-toe with Akami, but because the blades that he has are Imperial Arms, he's pretty much equally skilled and keeps on blocking her swords. He gets incredibly arrogant and cocky, and pretty much rightfully so, because I mean, for the most part, he's evading everything she tries to do, and if she can't hit him with a sword, she can't kill him. But then the good guys take a page from the bad guys book, and Lovick turns all of his strings into a spear, and stabs the guy from behind. The guy kind of freaks out, but not really saying, oh no, I lost. Hey, Akami, can you tell me why I lost to you? I can tell you why you lost to her. You're an idiot. She, of course, doesn't say that and just says that he got arrogant and cuts his head off. We head back outside and one of the guys jumps down from the manta ray and he kind of has a big stick with like metal bars on it and blue hair and like horns. He kind of looks like the main character from The Devil's Part-Timer when he goes all Super Satan, but less beefy. So just picture that, except with a stick and like metal things on the end of it, and you got this guy. Anyways, he comes down and wrecks ass everywhere, and people start to realize he's not a person, but a human Imperial Arms, which is apparently a thing. I love how they give us all this information beforehand and don't just throw it at us for shock value. Good writing. Good. Good writing. Good writing. Anyway, Stylish seems to be the first one to realize this, and while he's realizing this Bionic Commando is looking for him, she spots him and decides to tell everybody to go after him and all the people that are on the little cliff. But before they get a chance to, his trump card comes into play, and it turns out he put bombs inside of all of his little homunculus, domin- dom- dom homunculus, dom homunculus, dom- there's... homunculatrix? Anyway, they all explode, and the human Imperial Arm saves everybody by existing, and the group regroups and heads after Stylish. But little did they know that Stylish actually had a second trump card in the form of poison on all of his little people's weapons. So everyone starts getting weak and goes down, except for Tatsumi because his Imperial Armor is protecting him even though he got cut by the scissors earlier on. Anyways, him and the Human Manhattan Project go after Stylish, and Stylish turns on his own people and begins absorbing them into some, like, reverse Krang thing, I guess, like a big Baby? So he and the human arms start going at it, and the human arms is too quick for him, but he can't really do any damage to him because he's a big buff baby. So as the human arms is attacking Dr. Styles, Tatsumi decides to help him. But Akami in her weakened state stops him and tells him to carry her into battle. She hops on his back and the two fly off into the face of Dr. Styles, who starts throwing these weird tendril things at them and try and fight them, but he misses. Which leaves Tatsumi with the perfect opening to throw 
Akami at him and she cuts him down, killing him pretty much instantly. We pan up to the manor, see who the other person was, and he's up there and he's smiling and he's kind of, I think he's got orange hair if I remember correctly. Anyways, I'm pretty sure he's the person who was controlling the human arms, but either way, he smiles and our credits roll. Now, as far as this episode goes, I really like how they opened it with boobs getting attacked all suddenly. My only complaint is that I kind of wish she would have died partially because I didn't like the character and partially because it would have been kind of awesome to just have a sudden death in the series that's not like over dramatized, I guess. But that didn't happen and she came back and powerbombed the guy, so this is acceptable for me. Now, as this episode was basically one giant fight scene, I mean, it was kind of cool to see a big fight scene, but it didn't develop the plot, it didn't develop any characters, it was just kind of there. Although, I I'm glad to see the Bionic Commando come back in one piece because I really did expect her to die. And I also like the fact that mine got the revenge and not taught to me because it was kind of well written and well played out that small, small segment wherein it was acted very subtly, not super over the top, and I don't know, it just kind of worked for me. Although all the fights with the Kame kind of ended too quickly, like she was just a murder bot, and Lovick really didn't do anything except for stab that guy in the back, which good job, man. You stab someone in the back. Fantastic. And also, mine pulled out a Dragon Scouter. I mentioned that, right? Mine pulled out a Dragon Scouter. Because, uh, that, uh, that happened. Anyways, all in all, I mean, this episode kept me interested because it was a giant fight scene, but that's all it was. And kind of all this series has been. There hasn't been enough plot progression. There hasn't been enough character development. And I just don't foresee there being any more. So, as usual, I am left underwhelmed. Anyways, guys, tell me what you thought about this episode in the comments below. And like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And above all else, have a safe and happy holiday season. Peace.